What's up everybody? Welcome back to another US 11 video. In this one, we're getting a little bit festive because as you may know, the holidays are here. Christmas is right around the corner. All sorts of festivities are about to unleash, basically. And in this one, if you've read the title, I will be showing you how to make candy canes. Now, you can easily skip and go ahead and, you know, copy whatever I do. But for the people who want to stay here and learn something about Blender especially, please watch through the whole video. I do go through most of how you are able to make it by yourself. So with that, I would appreciate it if you guys smash the subscribe button. Well, no, I want you to be gentle with the subscribe button. Please hit the subscribe button. Also hit the like button. And most importantly, please share the video because that's how I grow the most, I think. So if you do that, I greatly appreciate it. And it would help me a ton by getting me more exposed to the YouTube algorithm. So with that, let's get right into it. And I also hope you enjoy the video. So the first thing we're gonna start off with is a cube and immediately we're going to loop cut by using control R. While I still have the time to say it and let you guys know, if you guys can keep up, you can use the bottom left keyboard indicator to see what keybinds I'm using for every step or use the builder buddy who will show up at the top left to drop info. He's brand new and I think you guys will like him. And please, please make sure to watch along to see and repeat what I'm doing so it's done properly. So I am using this cube to make the cylinder for the sake of the UV map later so the texture displays properly. And I select the top and bottom outer edges and use the two sphere transformation to make it circular. I also scale the cane afterwards excluding the Z axis to make it thinner. After you have the scale you want, you will want to spin the top faces of the cane so we can get the arc on it. And to do this properly, we want to place the origin of the spin tool somewhere next to where we're spinning from, acting as a center point or origin where the geometry spins around. And you'll see this in the clip. I have it somewhere in the center where the spinning is taking place. Here I have a little bit of sped up editing so it doesn't look contorted and ugly and I make it look sort of reasonable for a candy cane. Looking at some references, I know mine's not perfect, but you know, this is the general idea of how to make one. So I just wanted to let everyone know that the next section is the texturing section and there is a ton of information in there and it's going to go pretty fast. So I'm just letting you guys know we're going to jump straight into it and it's going to be crazy. So please be ready. Now I need a material for the textures to sit on. So I apply a new material with my objects faces selected while in edit mode. And then I add some nodes that will coordinate and map the texture to the surface of my cane in the shader editor. With these nodes, I will be able to change the layout of my material, such as the scale, positioning it, all those. And to get the lines on the cane, I will be putting in a wave texture. Also, be sure to add a color ramp so you can color your wave texture. Before I can texture it, I want to mark the seams for my UV that the material is baked on so I can create my texture. Making the seam along this edge will give me two even sides and this will be all we need. After we have that, you can start by connecting your nodes to the material to display on the object. You may want to adjust your mapping scales and positions based on how you want the texture to display, but you can copy my settings and connection. As you can see, one of the most important parts of the setup is probably the color ramp node, as it is determining the hard edges and the coverage of the colors on our cane.
So personally, I wanted a two color cane. And for some of you, you can stop where I was before, where it's just the red and white cane, and then skip to the bake section. But if you want two colors like I did, you can copy and paste the previous node setup, add a mix RGB node, and then change mix to multiply in the dropdown. I will also be showing this setup in the video. After we have our material texture set up, you want to create an image to bake the material to. So I will go to my texture paint window and select the new button to create a new image and you should copy all the settings I put in. After this, we can set up our bake and bake the material to our image texture. To set this up, first we want to go to our properties panel on the right, find the render properties as one of the first button options on the list, and find the render engine and change it to cycles. It'll by default say EV, so you guys know where to go. After cycles is selected, we now have access to bake our texture. Now go down and find bake in the same window and open it. Change the bake type to diffuse. Deselect direct and indirect lighting. Change the margin to 32 pixels in output. And finally, you can click bake, but not yet. We still have one more thing to do. Now that we have our image, we want to go to the shader editor and add the image texture that we want to bake to. This will be in the form of an image texture node. When you have the node, select the dropdown on the small picture icon to the left in the node. Select the texture you made. Make sure to only have this node selected so Blender recognizes that it's the image to bake to for each material. And of course, you will have to add this image texture to each material if you have multiple. And now we can finally bake the texture. And once you're ready, go back down to the bake window and click bake. Now that we have our image texture, we need to save it to upload to Roblox. Go back to the texture paint window and with the candy cane texture selected, press image and then save as. And save it to somewhere you can find easily when you have to upload it. Along with that, I'm going to export the model as an OBJ. We'll want to apply a default gray material so there's no texture automatically uploaded when we import into Roblox. Then we can export it by going to file, export, and export as a wavefront OBJ. And with all of that done, we can now import into Roblox by adding a mesh part to our workspace, going to the properties and clicking the file icon next to mesh ID and finding or uploading our OBJ file from where we saved it. As for the texture, I personally go to the decals page on the Roblox website and upload my texture directly, copy the ID and then paste it. It saves a bunch of time, I think, faster than uploading it directly in studio. So you can do that as well. Now you should have your candy cane, and I hope it worked out well for all of you. I'm also going to do a really quick showcase of the candy cane in a winter season setting or environment using some terrain to show you something you might want to do with it yourself. So like if you have a Christmas game or some winter season holiday type game, this is what it could look like.
All right, everybody, that's gonna do it for this video on how to create some candy canes for your winter game, your Christmas game, whatever you wanna do with them. I'm also gonna be leaving a link down below for the free model version of the ones I made in this video. So if you guys just wanna take it, you can go ahead and do that. But for those of you who learned something, I hope it was helpful and I hope you enjoyed it. And I honestly hope you like your result. If you do, considering all of that that I just said, please make sure to like, subscribe, and definitely share the video. Share it with your friends, your family, everything like that. I definitely appreciate that, and it's the way my channel grows the most, I think. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Have a good day, a good night, depending on wherever you're living or wherever you're watching this from, and whatever time of day it is. And I will see you in the next one.